I will be reading the Tennessee Comprehensive Driver's License Manual. I will not be going over Section A, but starting with Section B. Introduction. This section is designed for all new drivers. Reading and studying Sections B and C of this manual will help prepare for the driver license and learner permit tests. The section explains Tennessee's licensing requirements, driving responsibilities, and basic rules of the road. All drivers need to know the information in this section to pass the driver's license test and become safe, courteous drivers. Alone, the guide will not teach you how to drive. Mastering driving skills is done with a good instructor and plenty of practice. In order to help users study, there are a few simple questions at the end of each chapter. These are actual questions from the driver's license test. There are many possible questions that can be included on the driver's license test. These questions are included to help you review the material and get a sense of what the test may cover. Study the chapters and test your understanding of the information by using these questions. Website resources. Additional study questions and practice tests are available as part of the online services at www.tn.gov slash safety slash. There are different practice tests that focus on specific areas of study. Practice test cop topics and the related chapters in this publication include Alcohol, Other Drugs and Driving, Chapters B7, Guidelines for Driving, Chapters B1 and B2, Rules of the Road, Chapters B4, B5, B6, and B8, Traffic Signs and Signals, Chapter B3. Be prepared for the driving task. To help you safely prepare for the actual operation of the vehicle, follow the tips below. There is much more to driving than just grabbing the keys and getting in the car. Give your complete attention to knowing the proper operation of the vehicle's equipment. Getting ready to drive. Vehicle condition. One, check around the outside of the vehicle. Look for small children, pets, and any other sort of obstruction. Two, Check the condition of the vehicle, windows, lights, body damage, condition of the tires, and potential fluid leaks. 3. Enter the vehicle, place the key in the ignition, and lock the doors. 4. Identify the location and purpose of all switches, gauges, and pedals. 5. Know the location of the following controls, even if there is no need to use them at the moment. Horn, turn signals, emergency four-way flashers, headlights, on off and dimmer switch, windshield wipers and washer controls, parking brake and release lever, air conditioner, heater, defroster controls, gear shift location and clutch of manual transmission. Seat adjustments. Adjust the seat and if equipped, the steering column for the proper driving posture. Align your body to your seat. Adjust the seat to a comfortable upright position. Do not drive with the seat in a reclined or semi-reclined position. This is dangerous and reduces both your vision and your ability to react to emergency situations. Be sure you are the proper distance from the steering wheel and foot pedals. The pedals must be easily reached. Have good clear vision through the windshield, each side window, and all mirrors. Your foot should move smoothly from the accelerator to the brake while the heel is kept on the floor. Your body should be about 10 to 12 inches back from the steering wheel with or without an airbag. At this distance, an airbag would hit the driver in the chest if there was a collision. Sitting closer could result in serious head or neck injuries from an airbag hitting the chin or face. Do not move the seat so far forward or extend the steering column to a point where you cannot easily steer. The top of the steering wheel should be no higher than the top of the shoulders. Properly adjust seat head restraints to a level even with the back of the head. Head restraints are designed to prevent whiplash if hit from behind. Mirror adjustments. Adjust mirrors properly. Remember that all three of the rear view mirrors must be kept adjusted so that the widest possible view is given. Also, keep blind spots to a minimum. Adjust mirrors after the seat is adjusted correctly. Always adjust before driving. Outside mirrors should be adjusted to reduce blind spots and provide maximum visibility. Inside rear view mirror. Adjust the inside rear view mirror to frame the rear window.
To get the smallest blind spot at the right side of the car, turn the inside mirror so that only the edge of the right rear window post is seen. Left side mirror. To adjust the driver's side view mirror, seated in an upright position, place your head against the left side window and adjust the left side mirror. Set the mirror so you can just barely see the side of your car in the right side of the mirror, which is the part that is closest to the window. Right side mirror. Seated in an upright position, to adjust the passenger side view mirror, position your head so that it is just above the center console. Set the mirror so you can just barely see the side of your car in the left side of the mirror, which is the part of the mirror that is closest to the window. If the vehicle is not equipped with remote mirror adjustment controls, you may need assistance when properly positioning this mirror. After mirror adjustments, if you lean slightly backward and see more than a glimpse of the rear corners of the vehicle in your outside mirrors, adjust them outward. To make sure mirrors are in the correct position, let a car pass you on the left. As it passes out of the view in the inside mirror, you should see a front bumper in the outside left driver's side mirror. Before driving with these updated mirror settings, see how they work while your vehicle is parked. For example, you can parallel park along a street and see how passing vehicles move through your mirrors and peripheral vision. This can help you become oriented to the new settings before heading out into traffic. 6. Remember even properly positioned mirrors cannot eliminate all blind spots. To reduce risks, make a final check to the side before attempting any lateral moves. Even with properly adjusted mirrors, always turn your head and check blind spots when you want to turn or change lanes. Safety belts fastened. Fasten and adjust safety belts both lap and shoulder if separate belts. Lap belts should be positioned firmly across the hips while the shoulder belt is firmly across the shoulder. Make sure all passengers are using safety belts or child restraints before driving. If you or your passengers are not wearing a safety belt or are not secured in a car seat or booster seat, you may have to pay a fine. Full details on safety belts and child restraints are found in the Protecting Passengers Drivers Chapter. Starting the Vehicle Engine Check the vehicle's owner manual to determine the proper way to start the specific vehicle. The following are basic tips that apply to most vehicles. 1. Place foot on brake pedal and ensure gear shift selector is in the park position for automatic transmissions or in neutral for manual standard transmissions. Make sure the parking brake is on before starting any manual transmission vehicle. In vehicles with manual transmissions, the clutch must be depressed before the vehicle will start. 2. Place the car key into the ignition switch and turn the key forward to on. Check dash lights and instruments, anti-lock brake systems, ABS, airbags, fuel level, etc. for any warnings or alerts. 3. Turn on low beam headlights, particularly at night or in bad weather. Note, in normal daylight, vehicles are visible at twice the distance when headlights are on. 4. Using an automatic transmission. With automatic transmissions, the driver usually does not need to change gears. The vehicle put is put into R for reverse, when to back up, and in D for drive to drive forward. Some newer cars have an O gear selection for overdrive, which is used for when driving is on interstates or other expressways where there is very little stop and go traffic. Most automatic transmissions also have lower gears that will be indicated by an L, 2, or 1 on the gear shift indicator. These gears are generally not used except for special or emergency situations such as driving down steep mountain grades, slow speed driving on icy or other slippery roads, emergency deceleration if there is a brake failure. 5. Using a standard transmission. With a standard or manual transmission, the driver can control the gear speed ratio and use gears rather than brakes to help slow down the vehicle. The following techniques for smooth shifting will help you handle driving vehicles with standard transmissions. Hold the clutch pedal all the way down when starting, shifting gears, and when speed drops below 10 miles per hour as you are coming to a stop. Don't ride the clutch, meaning don't drive with your foot resting on the clutch pedal if it is not needed to change gears. Practice to get smooth coordination in using the clutch and accelerator pedals. Don't coast with the gears in neutral, it's illegal, 
or with the clutch pedal pushed down except when shifting gears. When going down steep hills, place the vehicle in a lower gear. Special warning for drivers with steering wheel interlock systems. The basic rule a driver must follow when operating a vehicle with a steering wheel interlock system is never turn the ignition to the lock position when the vehicle is in motion. The steering wheel will lock when trying to turn and control of the vehicle will be lost. Steering the vehicle. To begin driving the vehicle, use a relaxed grip on the steering wheel and always drive with both hands on the wheel. A firm but not tight grip allows you to feel the road, vibrations, etc. better. Don't develop the habit of driving with your elbow or arm propped on the door or out the window. You won't have full control of the steering wheel and a side swipe could take off your arm. You not only stare with your hands but also with your eyes. Always look where you want to go. This tells your brain what to do with your hands. Your peripheral vision, i.e. your vision to each side, helps you keep your road position. The following information outlines the steering methods for safe vehicle operation. 1. Looking at the steering wheel as a clock face, drivers should place the left hand at the 9 o'clock position and the right hand at the 3 o'clock position on the steering wheel. This position helps avoid injury from airbag deployment during an accident. When using the turn signal indicators, headlight dimmer, and windshield wiper controls, hand placement will change. You should have a slight bend in the elbow when the palm of your hand reaches the top of the steering wheel. Never sit in a position where your elbows are locked in a stiff arm type position. Do not let the steering wheel slip through your fingers when turning steering. Reverse the hand and arm movements made during the turn when coming out of a turn. This counter steering makes for smooth turns and will also help in skid and when driving on snow and ice. 3. Do not cross your arms when steering or turning. It is okay to cross wrists while turning, but crossing arms may also cause clothing and jewelry to interfere with safe turning. Also, you would suffer more serious injuries should your airbag deploy. 4. There are two generally accepted steering methods. Push-pull and hand over hand. The push-pull method is recommended because it slows down turning movements, making for a smoother, safer turn. It also keeps both hands on the steering wheel through the entire maneuver. Both hands move in an up and down motion on the sides of the steering wheel. The right hand on the right hand side and the other on the left hand side. Left turn. Start with your hands at the proper placement of 9 and 3 o'clock positions. Pull down with your left hand to approximately 7 o'clock and then push up with your right hand until it reaches approximately 1 o'clock. As your left hand pulls the wheel down, during the same movement you will move the right hand down to the 3 o'clock position so it is ready to take over. The right hand then pushes the wheel up as you reposition the left hand to repeat this pattern until you complete your turn. Counter steer to straighten out the vehicle. Right turn. Start with hands at the proper placement of the 9 and 3 o'clock positions. Pull down with your right immediately 5 o'clock, then push up with your left hand until it reaches approximately 11 o'clock. Repeat this pattern until the turn is completed. Counter steer to straighten out the vehicle. The hand over hand. When turning the vehicle with this method, be careful to keep speed down. Steering this way crosses the hands at the top of the wheel. This method allows for quicker wheel movement but there will be times when only one hand is on the wheel. Also, loose clothing or jewelry can get in the way, and the body can become unbalanced. For these reasons, the push-pull method is recommended for normal, everyday driving. For a right turn, start with the hands at the proper 9 and 3 o'clock positions. Lean forward and grasp the outside of the rim at the 1 o'clock position with the right hand palm down. Lean back and pull with the right hand to the 5 o'clock position. Lean forward and grasp the outside of the rim with the left hand, palm down at the 1 o'clock position. Lean back and pull to the 5 o'clock position with the left hand. Repeat the process until the front wheels of the vehicle are at the desired angle. Before you straighten out, return hands to the original 9 and 3 o'clock positions. Counter steer to straighten out the vehicle. For a left turn, simply follow the steps above, reversing the hand references and steering wheel references to the opposite of what is indicated above in each step. Backing, moving forward, and stopping. The following instructions are for vehicles with automatic transmissions. 1. Backing. 
Common mistakes committed by new drivers when backing are A, moving too fast, B, providing too much steering input, and C, turning the wheel in the wrong direction. With foot on the brake, move gear selector lever to R for reverse. Grasp steering wheel at 12 o'clock positions with the left hand, turn to the right and place right arm over the back of the seat. Look over your shoulder through the rear window for a safe, clear path. Use idle speed or accelerate gently and smoothly, keeping a slow speed. Turn the wheel to the right to back to the right. Turn to the left to back to the left. Continue looking to the rear until completing, coming to a complete stop. Moving forward. Learning to avoid sudden or quick jolts forward will take some practice as follows. With foot on brake, move gear selector lever to D for drive. Check forward for safe, clear path. Check for traffic to the sides and behind. Signal if pulling away from a curb. If safe, pivot foot to accelerator and press down gently. Look at least one block ahead and steer toward a reference point. Three, stopping. Planning ahead for smooth stops will help you avoid brake wear and potential rear end collisions. Like most states, Tennessee reports that rear end collisions are the most common type of accident recorded annually. Check mirrors to the side and rear for traffic. If moving to the curb or other lane, check over the right or left shoulder and signal intention. Release accelerator and pivot foot to brake pedal slowly. Press down on the brake pedal with a steady pressure for smooth stop. Do not stomp on the brake pedal. If stopping at a stop sign or traffic signal light, stop before the crosswalk, a marked lot stop line. And if there is no stop line, at the point of the nearest intersecting roadway, where you can view the approaching traffic on the intersecting roadway before entering the intersection. If stopping at a curb, move to within 18 inches of the curb for a proper parking. As you may have noticed, driving is a complex and detailed activity that requires your complete attention. The safest thing you can do is to make sure that you don't let your attention driving safely decline after you become competent. Special warning, carbon monoxide poisoning. Avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide gas from a car engine can kill. It has not taste, no smell, nor visibility. It generally leaks when the car heater is running, when the exhaust system is not working properly, or in heavy traffic when breathing fumes from other vehicles. How to avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. Have the exhaust system checked regularly. Be alert for unusual roars from under the car. Never let the engine run in a closed garage. Do not use a heater air conditioner in a parked car with the windows closed. Close the fresh air vent in congested traffic. The information in this chapter covered how to become prepared for a driving task. It will take some practice for new drivers to translate these written details into common habits for safe driving. Therefore, review this information frequently. Once you are comfortable with the operation of the vehicle, you will be ready to drive in various traffic situations, such as interstate driving. Texting while driving. Effective July 1, 2009, drivers are prohibited from using a handheld telephone or handheld personal digital assistant to transmit or read a written message while uh, the driver's motor vehicle is in motion. Violations can result in a fine not to exceed $50 and court costs not to exceed $10. Law enforcement officers, firefighters, emergency medical persons, and emergency management agency officers, when in the actual discharge of their official duties, are exempt from the provisions of the law. Operating a handheld phone in a school zone. Effective January 1, 2018, it is an offense for persons 18 years or older to use a handheld mobile phone while in a motor vehicle is in motion in any marked school zone in the state when a warning flasher or flashers are in operation. There is an exception if the phone is being used in a hands-free mode. This exception also does not apply to persons under 18 years of age and creates a delinquent act for these individuals. Video devices and vehicles. Careful planning and consideration should be given for the placement of a video device in vehicles. State law prohibits the installation of a video monitor or video screen capable of displaying a television broadcast or a video signal that is intended to display an image visible to the driver of a vehicle while in motion. A navigation or global positioning device, a vehicle information system display, visual displays for the driver's view forward, behind, and the sides of the vehicle are not prohibited. 
Careful consideration should be given to the placement of this equipment to ensure no visual obstructions. Chapter 1, Chapter Sample Test Questions. Here are some sample test questions. Because these are just study questions to help you review, you may receive a test with completely different questions in whole or in part. The page number is shown for where the current uh, correct answers can be located for each question. Also, answers to all study questions can be found in the back of the book. 1. Properly adjusted seat head restraints. A. Are designed to prevent whiplash if hit from behind. B. Both A and C. Or C. Should always be at a level even with the back of a head. That's on page 27. 2. The driver should drive with both hands on the steering wheel approximately in the A. 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock positions. B. 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. C. 7 o'clock and 5 o'clock positions. Page 28. 3. When adjusting the driver's seat for best driving posture, set the seat in the upright position where your body is about f how far from the steering wheel? A. 6 to 8 inches. B. 10 to 12 inches. Or C. 18 to 24 inches. Page 27. Tennessee Safety Belt Laws. It's the law. The use of safety belts, child restraint safety seats, and child booster seats are required by Tennessee law. These can help save you and your passengers' lives in the event of a traffic crash. Tennessee law enforcement officers can stop drivers and issue citations for failure to observe the safety belt or child restraint laws. Officers can stop and ticket drivers solely for disobeying safety belt and child restraint device CRD laws. A. Safety belts are required for all drivers and all passengers in the front seat anytime the vehicle is in motion. B. Safety belts are also required for back seat passengers in the following situations. If the passengers are under 17 years old, this provision no longer applies when back seat passengers are 18 years or older. If the driver has either a learner permit or an intermediate license and when the passengers are between 4 and 17 years old. If the passenger is 4 through 8 years old and is shorter than 4 feet 9 inches in height, these passengers must be in a child booster seat at all times. Children in booster seats must be in the back seat of a vehicle if the vehicle has a back seat. The booster seat must meet Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards as indicated on its label. Child Safety Restraint Rules Tennessee was the first state in the country to pass a child passenger protection law requiring children to be restrained in child safety seats, car seats, and booster seats. A. A child under one year old or any child weighing less than 20 pounds must be in a child passenger restraint system, car seat, that is facing the rear of the car. B. Children who are one through three years old and who weigh more than 20 pounds must be in a child passenger restraint system that is facing forward. C. Children who are 4 through 8 years old and whose height is under 4 feet 9 inches must be in a belt position booster seat system, child booster car seat, and wearing a seat belt. Note, these seats should be in the rear seat of the car if the vehicle has a back seat. All child passenger restraint systems, car seats and booster seats referenced above must meet Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards and be used consistently with the manufacturer's and the vehicle's instructions. D. Children are further protected by the law, which makes the driver responsible for their protection up to the age of 16. If children under age 16 are not properly restrained, the driver may be charged and fined $50 for a violation of the law. If the child's parent or legal guardian is present in the car but not driving, then the parent or legal guardian is responsible for making sure that the child is properly transported and may be fined for non-compliance. If the violation is one relating to not using a car seat or booster seat for children under 9 years old or whose height is less than 4 feet 9 inches, the punishment is greater. The driver can be charged with a Class D misdemeanor, required to attend a class on safely transporting children, and required to pay possible fees and fines. E. Provisions are made for the transportation of children in medically prescribed modified child restraints. A copy of a doctor's prescription should be carried in the vehicle utilizing the modified child restraint device, CRD, at all times. Safety belts save lives. Safety belt facts. 
Safety belts and child safety seats help prevent injury five different ways by one, preventing ejection. Ejection greatly increases the chance of death or serious injury. The chance of being killed in a crash by being ejected from a vehicle is one in eight. Safety belts virtually eliminate ejection. The belted driver stays inside the car and is better protected from injury. Two, shifting crash forces to the strongest parts of the body structure. To get the most benefit from a seat belt, be aware of the following points. The lap belt should be worn low over the pelvis with the bottom edge touching the top of the thigh snugly. The shoulder belt should be worn over the shoulder and across the chest, not under the arm or over the abdomen. Make certain that the shoulder belt is not worn so loosely that it slides off the shoulder. Pregnant women should wear the lap belt below the abdomen and the shoulder belt above the belly. 3. Spreading crash forces over a wide area of the body. Safety belts reduce the possibility of injury from hostile surfaces inside the car, steering wheel, dashboard, windshield, controls, etc. Even if the belted driver collides with some of these surfaces, it happens with much less force and often results in less serious injury. Keeping the body more closely in the proper driving posture. The belt keeps the driver in the driver's seat. The belted driver is better able to deal with emergencies and often avoids more serious trouble. 5. Protecting the head and spinal cord. The belted driver is less likely to be stunned or made unconscious by the crash and it is better able to cope with the situation. Research has found that proper use of lap shoulder belts reduces the risk of fatal injury to the front seat passenger car occupants by 45% and the risk of moderate to critical injury by 50%. For occupants of light trucks, 60% and 65% respectively. Final stats. In the U.S., a person was injured in a traffic crash every 13 seconds in 2015, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Traffic Safety Facts. In 2016, vehicle occupants were 32 times more likely to die in a crash if they were unbelted. They were three times more likely to sustain serious injuries if they were unbelted. Failure to use a safety belt contributes to more fatalities than any other single traffic safety related behavior. Motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for children ages 3 to 14. In 2010, an average of 6 children are killed and 463 are injured every day in the United States. Common fears and misconceptions about safety belts. Many people still have bad information about using safety belts. For example, Safety belts can trap you inside a car. It takes less than a second to undo a safety belt. Crashes seldom happen where a vehicle catches fire or sinks in deep water and you are trapped. Only one half of 1% of all crashes end in fire or submersion. Even if they do, a safety belt may keep you from being knocked out. Your chance to escape will be better if you are conscious. Some people are thrown clear in a crash and walk away with hardly a scratch. Most crash fatalities result from the force of impact or from being thrown from the vehicle. Your chances of not being killed in an accident are much better if you stay inside the vehicle. Safety belts can keep you from being thrown out of the vehicle and into the path of another one. Ejected occupants are four times more likely to be killed as those who remain inside the vehicle. If I get hit from the side, I am better off being thrown across the car away from the crash point. When a vehicle is struck from the side, it will move sideways. Everything in the vehicle that is not fastened down, including the passengers, will slide toward the point of the crash, not away from it. Buckle up. It's worth the effort. In 2016, traffic crashes on Tennessee's roadways killed 1,039 people. Sadly, many of these deaths could have been prevented if the victims had taken the time to buckle up. Tennessee Child Passenger Protection Laws by promoting child passenger safety, Tennessee attempts to protect children from needless death or injury. Many of these needless injuries result in permanent disabilities, such as paralysis, brain damage, epilepsy, etc. Why needless? Consider the following. Motor vehicle injuries are a leading cause of death among children in the United States, but many of these deaths can be prevented. In the United States, the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control reported 663 children ages 12 years and younger died as occupants in motor vehicle crashes during 2015, and more than 
121,350 were injured in 2014. Infants under one year old who are properly secured in safety seats survive almost 75% of the crashes that would otherwise be fatal. Toddlers, one to four years old, who are properly secured in safety seats survive more than half of the crashes that would otherwise be fatal. The proper use of child restraint devices could prevent 9 out of 10 deaths and 8 out of 10 serious injuries to child passengers under the age of 4. If child safety restraint seats were used properly 100% of the time, the percentage of children who survive crashes would go up by 23%. Set a good example. Always buckle up. Think about what your child sees you do in the car. Do you wear your safety belt? Children follow their parents' examples. Studies show that children's behavior in the car improves when they learn how to ride in a child restraint device. Make it a habit for you and your child. Tips for using safety belts with children. When your child graduates from the child restraint system to safety belts, it is very important for the belt to lie across the correct area of the child's body. Basically, a child is big enough to use the vehicle lap and shoulder belt when one, they can sit with their back against the vehicle seat back, and two, their knees bend over the edge of the vehicle seat. The lap belt should lie securely on the child's upper thigh, low and snug around the hips. The shoulder belt should fit snugly across the chest and rest between the neck and shoulder. Never put the child's shoulder belt behind the child's back or under the arms. Belts to bones. The pelvic bone and the collarbone should bear the pressure of the safety belts. If the safety belt system rides too high on the child's stomach, or if the shoulder harness lies across the face or neck area of the child, go back to using a booster seat or a high back booster model that uses the vehicle's existing safety belt system. Airbag safety. Airbags can help save your life. Airbags combined with safety belts are the best protection currently available in a car. SUV or truck. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHSTA, estimates there are, as of 2013, 202 million airbag equipped passenger vehicles on the road, including 199 million with dual airbags. Between 1987 and 2012, airbags have been credited with saving more than 39,976 lives from information provided by the NHTSA. TSA. Remember, most tragedies involving airbags can be prevented if the airbags are used in combination with safety belts. Airbags were developed to prevent occupants from striking the steering wheel or dashboard. The airbag deploys and immediately deflates, faster than the blink of an eye. If you drive, own or ride in a vehicle equipped with either a driver's side and or passenger side airbag, you should follow the following safety points. Airbags and children. Children ages 12 and under are safer in the back seat of the vehicle. The back is where it is it's at for children 12 and under. While airbags have a good overall record of providing supplemental protection for adults in the event of a crash, they pose a severe risk for children ages 12 and under. Research shows that children and airbags simply do not mix. Children are safer when they are properly restrained in a child restraint device or safety belt in the rear seat of a vehicle, regardless of whether the vehicle is equipped with a passenger side airbag. It is not advisable to place a child safety seat in the front seat of a vehicle when a passenger side airbag is present. Instead, the child safety seat should be placed in a rear seat if available. Infants in rear facing seats should be placed in the rear seat if available of a vehicle with a passenger side airbag. If a child must ride in the front seat of a vehicle, such as a pickup truck, with a passenger side airbag, the seat should be moved back as far as possible and the child should be properly buckled up. Airbags and adults. Always wear the lap and shoulder safety belts. If you have an adjustable steering wheel, always try to keep it tilted down in a level or parallel position. Sit as far as possible from the steering wheel or dashboard on passenger side to give the airbag room to deploy and spread its energy. 10 to 12 inches between the chest and the airbag module is recommended by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA. Other Child Passenger Protection Laws It is illegal in Tennessee to allow any child under the age of 6 to ride in the bed of a pickup truck. 
It is also against the law to allow any child between the ages of 6 and 12 to ride in the bed of a pickup truck on any state or interstate highway. Cities and counties may prohibit by ordinance children between the ages of 6 and 12 from riding in the bed of a pickup truck on any city or county roads or highways. There are two exceptions. One exception to this law is when a child is being transported in the bed of a vehicle when it is part of an organized parade, procession, or other ceremonial event and the vehicle must not exceed, exceed the speed of 20 miles per hour. The other exception is when the child is being transported in the bed of the vehicle is involved in agricultural activities. Special warning during hot weather. Do not leave children or pets unattended in a vehicle. On a typical sunny summer day, the temperature inside a car can reach potentially deadly levels within minutes. Experts say the damage can happen in as little as 10 minutes. Even on a mild day at 73 degrees outside, an SUV can heat up to 100 degrees in 10 minutes and to 120 degrees in just 30 minutes. At 90 degrees outside, the interior of a vehicle can heat up to 160 degrees within several minutes. Heat exhaustion can occur at temperatures above 90 degrees, and heat stroke can occur when temperatures rise above 105 degrees. If not treated immediately, heat exhaustion can lead to heat stroke. With respiratory symptoms that are still developing, children are particularly vulnerable to heat exhaustion. Depending on the seriousness of the offense, a person can be charged with penalties ranging from a Class A misdemeanor to a Class A felony for leaving a child unattended in a vehicle, TCA Code 39-15-401 provides that any person who knowingly, other than by accidental means, treats a child under 18 years of age in such a manner as to inflict injury commits a Class A misdemeanor. If the abused child is 6 years of age or less, the penalty is a Class D felony. TCA Code 39-15-402 carries a possible Class B or Class A felony for aggravated child abuse and aggravated child neglect or endangerment. Class A misdemeanors carry a penalty of not greater than 11 months, 29 days, or a fine up to $2,500 or both. Class A felonies can carry a penalty of not less than 15 and no more than 60 years. In addition, the jury may assess a fine not to exceed $50,000. Remember, children should never be left alone in a vehicle, not even to run a quick, quick errand. Be sure that all occupants leave the vehicle when unloading. Don't overlook sleeping babies. Children can set a vehicle in motion. Always lock your car and ensure children do not have access to keys or remote entry devices. If a child gets locked inside, call 911 and get him or her out as soon as possible. If you see a child or animal unattended in a car, be proactive and call 911. Chapter 2. Chapter Simple Test Questions. Here are some simple test questions because these are just study questions to help you review. You may receive a test with completely different questions in whole or in part. The page number is shown for where the correct answer can be located for each question. Also, answers to all the study questions can be found in the back of the book. Four, a child in a child pa passenger restraint system, car seat, should A, be facing the rear of the car if weighing less than 20 pounds and under one year old, B, be facing forward if the child is one through three years old and weighs more than 20 pounds, or C, A and B, page 31. Five, the lap belt should be worn A, at the abdomen for extra comfort, B, above the pelvis so it doesn't touch the top of the thighs. C, by pregnant woman below the abdomen and the shoulder belt above the belly. Page 31. 6. The safest place for children 12 and under to ride in a vehicle equipped with airbags is A, the front seat, B, the back seat, C, the bed of a pickup truck. Page 33.